What's up guys, we are back with a full slate of MLB action here on Thursday, June 27th. Wednesday got off to a great start, guys. We nailed the Phillies minus 162. That's a pick we added late once we got pitching information, so make sure you're checking back to stay up to date on what goes in the pinned comment. We had the Braves minus 126 there in game one. They came through pretty comfortably. The Astros minus one and a half, easy win there as well. They dominated in that game. We had the Royals minus one and a half. They made us wait until late in the game, but they came through against that Marlins bullpen and made that easy win and a reality. After that, guys, things got pretty dark. We saw the Yankees just look absolutely terrible. Again, Luis Gill looked awful. Four runs given up and only four and a third innings. Just not a good outing for him. Our no-run first inning got crushed by Otani hitting a home run there in the first inning. So that's a risk you always take if you're taking a no-run first inning spot and the Dodgers are involved. Last but not least, guys, in very disappointing fashion, we saw Ryan Nelson get absolutely shelled and the Diamondbacks just could not do enough against that bullpen to, uh, to make that a winning pick for us. So four and three on the day overall. Not exactly what we were after, but not a disaster, I suppose. Let's see if we can find some bigger wins here on a short Thursday slate. Before we get into the games, guys, do me a big favor and hit that like button. It's a great way to show some support for the channel and all the work we put in every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description and go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today and we'll give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment. So let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. We've got the Minnesota Twins taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Twins come into this game fresh off of that 8-3 win there in Game 2. Pretty disappointing stuff from the Diamondbacks in that game. For us, the Twins are handing the ball in this one to David Festa. He is going to be making his major league debut. He's a young 24-year-old guy. He's one of their better, but not necessarily considered their best prospect. I want to say uh, he's like their fifth best prospect or something like that. He has had a very high strikeout rate in the minor leagues this season, putting up pretty good minor league numbers, but we'll see if he can keep that up going up against big league bats. I mean, he's a big guy, 6'6", six, six, you know, a tall guy, not big necessarily, but a tall guy for sure, and we'll just see what he can do out there. Going to be a little bit interesting with him out there on the mound as a rookie, and making his season debut, you can always expect there to be, you know, some, some bumps in the road there. Looking at the numbers for the Twins bullpen this season, not great guys. Honestly, one of the, uh, the lower rated bullpens in the majors with a four 4.18 bullpen ERA. So yeah, not fantastic there and not necessarily a bullpen that's been looking amazing lately. So if he can't go uh, deep into their game, you know, if this young rookie can't make a deep you know, outing, it's going to be a little bit tough for this team to hold on, you would think. The Twins, though, they have won three out of their last four overall and the bats looking pretty good. Obviously, we saw a three-run double in that game. Uh, just in general, this offense is hitting the ball pretty well. I mean, Carlos Correa is a monster. We saw Willie Castro hit a no-doubter home run there in game two of this series. They're 10th in the majors in run scored, 13th in the majors in batting average, batting 246 as a team. They're uh, they're a good slugging percentage team, guys. Their slugging percentage is 420, which has them 7th in the majors, so nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, overall, this team maybe should be a little bit better than their current like you know record. I mean, 44 and 36, not amazing, but not terrible. They're eight games back of Cleveland there in the AL Central. They're hoping they can uh, you know get get another win here, get a two to one series here against the Diamondbacks who come into this game fresh off a tough loss. Loss. They've actually lost three out of their last four overall, which is a little bit disappointing. This team's 39 and 41 on the season. They're handing the ball to Jordan Montgomery, who's six and four this year with a 5.71 ERA. He's coming off of, I would say, three very reasonable starts. His last time out, it was against the Phillies. It was at Philadelphia, guys. He went six innings, gave up five hits, and only two earned runs in a game that we saw the Diamondbacks eventually win five to four. The Diamondbacks are three and zero oh over his last three starts, so that's pretty impressive stuff. And that covers two home starts and one road start, so he's gonna be back at home for this one. I'm sure he's not feeling too bad about that, but it doesn't seem to matter really whether he's at home or on the road. One major problem for Arizona this season has been their bullpen guys has been one of the worst bullpens in Major League Baseball, so not going to lie, that's something we're certainly worried about in this game. Like, even if they have a lead going late into the game, is the bullpen going to be able to hold it down? Seems a bit questionable, and honestly, right now, it seems a bit questionable whether or not they're going to be able to build that lead, guys. Over their last four games, they've scored three five, one, and one run, respectively. Just not hitting the ball as well as we've come to expect from this team's this team, at least at times this season. I mean, they're ninth in the majors and run scored. 8th in the majors, batting 251 as a squad. They're 7th in the majors and on base percentage. Like, this is a pretty solid hitting team. And we see Christian Walker out there with 17 home runs and 50 RBIs. Like, 
This is not a bad offensive team, guys, but they've just kind of been swinging some pretty cold bats lately. So we're a little bit worried about that. Looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Twins at minus 104. We see the Diamondbacks at minus 112. There's an over-under of 9.5 in this game, so the odds makers are expecting plenty of offense. We see Minnesota is 20 and 20 on the road. Arizona is 20 and 18 at home. We've got both teams showing some slight trends towards the under, but I'm not too interested in that over-under of 9.5, guys. I actually like the Diamondbacks in this one going up against a rookie pitcher. Uh, minus 112 is a pretty uh, affordable number. Jordan Montgomery's been throwing the ball really, really well lately. So we might be going back to the well here with the Diamondbacks, even though they burned us last night. We'll have to see if this makes it into the pinned comment, but it definitely has a chance. Next up, guys, we have the Chicago Cubs going on the road to take on the San Francisco Giants. We see the Cubs coming into this game fresh off of three straight losses to the Giants. They're not having a good time in this little uh, series on the road, guys. They lost 5-4, to 5-1, to one, and 4-3, to three, respectively. So the Cubs straight up not having a great time. Not a lot of positive to report for this team in general either guys just not having a great time they're handing the ball to Shota Imanaga hoping he can turn things around but he's gonna have to be turning things around for himself a little bit he's not having the best time out there he's coming off of an absolutely horrendous start against the New York Mets he gave up 11 hits and 10 earned runs over three innings of work just a complete disaster back on the 21st. We'll see if he can bounce back in this one. His three starts before that were all relatively good. He did give up five hits to the White Sox, which is a little bit out of character. Actually, five runs. They just weren't earned runs to the White Sox, which is obviously pretty far out of character for him. Just not having his best time out there on the mound. I mean, he did have a seven-inning start against the Cardinals. He's going up against a Giants team that has been a little bit hit or miss offensively. So we'll just have to see how he can do. The Cubs' bullpen in general, guys, has been right around league average for most of recent history, guys. Not an elite bullpen, but not a complete disaster out there. We'll see what they can do against the Giants, and we'll see if this offense can put up any runs, guys, because they have scored three, one, four, and two runs, respectively, over their last four games all of which were losses. The Cubs are down to 37 and 44 on the year. They're dead last in the NL Central. This is just not where this team expected to be. Have they had some injuries and stuff like that? Sure, but nothing to the extent that it should derail their season this bad. They're 25th in the majors and batting average, batting 229 as a squad. They are 27th in slugging percentage. They are only 19th in run scored and 15th in on base percentage. So, I mean, I guess if they hang around uh, MLB average and on base percentage, maybe some of these offensive numbers will start to trend upwards, but they have an awful lot of work to do. And they're taking on a Giants team that's obviously won three in a row. They've needed this little winning streak, guys, after losing five in a row. So things are not exactly all roses and butterflies there for the Giants. They're 39 and 42 this season. Handing the ball in this game to Jordan Hicks. He's four and four this year with a 3.24 ERA. He's coming off of a terrible start there at the Cardinals where he gave up six hits and five earned runs and two home runs over only four innings of work. His last start against the Cubs was only back on the 17th. So very, very recently he went five innings, gave up four hits and no runs to the Cubs. He walked four and struck out four in that outing. So, yeah, he definitely has some very positive history against the Cubs, and it is very, very recent. So, for sure, have to take that into account. We also have to take into account that this Giants bullpen is not very good. Definitely a step below the Cubs with a 4.48 bullpen ERA that has them around 23rd in the major. So, yeah. Pretty concerning stuff there. Can't really trust this bullpen later in the game. And the offense, guys, I mean, it's looked okay lately. Four, five, and five runs, respectively, over their last three. But those aren't crazy big crooked numbers that they're putting up. I mean, they're they're scoring some runs, don't get me wrong. But this team very much living up to its average offensive uh, moniker here. I mean, they're 14th in the majors in runs scored. 14th in the majors in batting average, batting 246 as a team. They're 17th in slugging percentage. Not a great power team. And they're 12th in on-base percentage. So not exactly a... A, a roster that's running a whole bunch of killers up there to the plate. So I've got my questions about how many runs they're going to be able to score against Imanaga, assuming that we get the actual version of Imanaga, not whatever we saw his last time on the mound. Looking at the numbers for this game, guys, you see it's basically a coin flip. We've got the Cubs at minus 108, the Giants at minus 105. We've got an over under of seven and a half in this game. In general, guys, looking at the numbers for this one, I do see there's very significant trends for both teams towards the under. So I do think under seven and a half is pretty reasonable. I also think it's pretty tough to sweep a team in a four-game series. The Cubs are only 15 and 25 on the road, though, and the Giants are 22 and 17 at home. So really, guys, I'm leaning towards the Giants minus 105. If you wanted to do a no-run first inning in this game, that seems very, very reasonable to me. I'm a little bit scared of what we're going to see from Imanaga, so that's probably not going in the pinned comment. I also don't hate the under 7.5, like I said, but once again, probably not a play that we have enough faith in to put in the pinned comment. If you're forcing me to bet this game, give me the Giants minus 105, but in general, I'm going to be staying away. 
Next on the docket, we've got the Atlanta Braves going on the road to take on the Chicago White Sox. We see the Braves come into this game fresh off of a, uh, a split doubleheader there against the Cardinals. They won game one of that series, uh, that doubleheader, as we predicted, and then lost game two, uh, a game that we didn't really have too much of a lean on. The Braves are 44-34 and 34 on the season. They're handing the ball their ace, Chris Sale, in this game. He's been dominant this year. He's 10-2 with a 2.91 ERA. Just an absolute monster out there. His last start, he did only last five innings against the Yankees, but he went five innings, gave up only a single hit and a single earned run while striking out eight and walking three. We see that the Braves are three and two over his last five starts with just one of those outings being an actual problem outing there for sale where he got shredded by the Oakland A's, but he's bounced back from that. He's looked fantastic in his last three starts, a good start at the Yankees, a good start at home against Tampa Bay, and then a good start at the Washington Nationals. So in general, we've Feeling very, very good about Chris Sale on the mound. No reason to have a bunch of uh, concerns about this guy. He's looked dominant this season with only the occasional bad outing. We also feel pretty good about the Braves' bullpen. They're clearly top 10 in the majors with a 3.58 bullpen ERA. So definitely, if Sale has a decent outing, you can expect the uh, the bullpen to pick up the torch and carry it the rest of the way for the convincing win. In general, the Braves' bats haven't looked amazing lately. I mean, they've only scored one, six, three, and three runs, respectively, over their last few games. But they're about to take on a Chicago White Sox team that is straight up not very good. So I think we can expect some uh, resurgence here from this offense. I mean, they're 16th in the majors in runs scored, 10th in the majors in slugging percentage, though, so they can hit the long ball when they're given the opportunity. 18th in the majors and on base percentage. So yeah, in general, guys, I think this is an offense that's slightly underperforming. I think we'll see them get back on track here, especially going up against such a weak opponent. They're taking on the Chicago White Sox, who do not have a starter confirmed for this game. They're coming off a 4 to nothing loss there against the Dodgers. They've lost their last four games and a row. Not a ton of positives to report for this team when they don't have crochet on the mound. This is just not an outfit that's really worth watching. They're 21 and 61 on the season. Just, yeah, not having a good time. Like I said, no confirmed starter for this team, but if we're looking at a full-on bullpen start for the White Sox, that's pretty dark stuff, guys. They are 25th in the majors with a 4.74 bullpen ERA. So if we're looking at their bullpen about to piece together a start for this game, that's going to be a big yikes for me. I don't expect a lot of positive things for the White Sox in this game, and neither do the odds makers, guys. They've got the White Sox at plus 235. We see the Braves at minus 290. Obviously, we're not too interested in either of those numbers. If you're looking at the over-under for this game, it's currently at 8. If you take the Braves here against the run line, guys, you take a minus 1.5, it's minus 175. That's not very appealing, but man, that really gives us an idea of where the odds makers think this game is at. Seems like the Braves very likely in for a comfortable win in this game. Seems like a bit of an expensive price, but if you wanted to add that into a parlay or something like that, I do think it's fine. I expect the Braves to really have a field day out there, basically taking batting practice off of this bullpen. So give me the Atlanta Braves minus one and a half at a very expensive price. It looks like the best we can find out there is around minus 170. So give me the give me the Braves minus one and a half at minus 170. I think this is a pretty good spot. I think you're going to make some money. If you can find it at bigger numbers or you want to check some alt lines or something like that, I think this is a game the Braves very comfortably win by three runs or more. Moving right along here, guys, we're looking at the Miami Marlins going on the road to take on the Philadelphia Phillies. We see the Marlins come into this game fresh off of a 5-1 to loss there at the Kansas City Royals. They actually managed to win one game of that series, so I guess they'll take it. They're 28-52 and on the year, so not a lot of positive things to report for this team. They're handing the ball in this one to Trevor Rogers, who's 1-8 this season with a 4.90 ERA. He's actually coming off of his third straight pretty reasonable start, guys. He's actually been reasonable in four out of his last five starts. And by reasonable, I mean pretty good. He's only given up more than two earned runs in one of his last five starts that's not bad at all like the guy is doing whatever he can to like hold things together when he is out there on the mound other than uh you know other than him making the start not a lot of positive things to say about this marlins pitching staff i mean they've been one of the worst bullpens in the major leagues pretty much all season long obviously they'll have their weird moments like everybody does but yeah not expecting that to be one of these weird weird moments here going up against the phillies a team that can definitely hit the ball can the marlins hit the ball well guys over the last few games, they've scored one, two, one, and six runs, respectively. Not a good offensive team. No way around it. Just not a good offensive team, guys. They are 29th in the majors in runs scored. They are all the way down at 29th in the majors on base percentage as well. Just not a very good offensive team. Not at all. They're one of the worst. They're just barely a little bit of a step up over the Chicago White Sox for that absolute worst offense in the majors spot. So, yeah, just not a lot of positive things to say about this offense. They're going to need to score some runs going up against the Phillies, who've now won four out of their last five games. They won two out of three against Detroit. 
Detroit. They won the last game of that series 6-2, to two, so we'll definitely take that one. Thank you, Phillies. They're handing the ball in this game to Zach Wheeler, who's 9-4 and four this season with a 2.73 ERA. He's coming off a very, very good start there against the Arizona Diamondbacks. He went seven innings, gave up two hits and only a single earned run, while striking out eight and walking none. A very nice bounce back after having a tough, tough outing there at Baltimore. So we can definitely expect very, very good things from Zach Wheeler. He's been very good all season long, obviously with the occasional hiccup in there, but it is very, very occasional. And when he is on, guys, he is really, really on. The Phillies bullpen, obviously not a problem either. The best bullpen in the majors right now by bullpen ERA with a 3.07 bullpen ERA. Yeah, absolute tops in the majors. Not a lot of questions for me about this bullpen. They are fantastic. So I'm expecting very good things from them going up against a weak hitting Marlins team. And I'm also expecting some pretty decent stuff from the Phillies bats. Maybe they haven't been going crazy at the plate. I mean, over the last few games, they've scored 6, 1, 8, 4, and 12 runs respectively. So the fact that I would say not crazy at the plate is wild because, man, this team is just so, so good up there that those kind of numbers aren't as aren't the ceiling for them. I mean, we see Bryce Harper hitting 305 this season with 20 home runs. Like, this is just an elite, elite offense. They're fourth in the majors and run scored third in the majors and batting average batting 258 as a team. They are second in the majors and on base percentage and fifth in the majors in slugging percentage with a 421 slugging percentage. Like just not a lot of weaknesses to find with this lineup guys, just elite hitters up and down expecting big things from them. Definitely expecting them to put up a lot of runs here in this matchup. And so are the odds makers guys. We see the Marlins at plus 240. We see the Phillies at minus 278. We've got an over under of seven and a half in this game. Guys, if you take the Phillies at minus one and a half, you can get them at minus 130. Yeah, we are going to slam it on that. That could be, I know we didn't win our biggest bet of the day yesterday on the Yankees, but this is going to very likely be our biggest bet of the day. Taking the Phillies minus one and a half at minus 130 seems like very, very good money to me. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the Texas Rangers going on the road to take on the Baltimore Orioles. The Rangers come into this game fresh off of getting swept there at Milwaukee. They lost the last game of that series 6-5 to five in the 10th inning, so pretty devastating stuff there for the Rangers, who are now down to 37-43 and 43 on the season. Not exactly having a great time. They're handing the ball to John Gray, who's 3-3 three and three this year with a 3.03 ERA. He's coming off a fantastic start there against the Royals, where he went six innings, gave up two hits and no runs while striking out three and walking no one. A huge bounce back for him after getting just destroyed by the Mets. In general, guys, I mean, he's been in and out of the rotation this season. He's had some, uh, you know, outings out of the bullpen. He's had some good outings. He's had some good starts even. I mean, he had a good start at the Phillies back on the 21st of last month, but that's over a month ago now. So, you know, not, not a whole ton we can take from that. In general this season, guys, I guess he's been decent, but I definitely have some question marks about him. I mean, what are we, can we really expect from this guy on a night-to-night -night basis? And he's going up against a very tough opponent. So we're just going to have to wait and see on him. We're also going to kind of have to wait and see on the Rangers' bullpen. They're a little bit below average, a 4.04 .04 bullpen ERA. Not a disaster, but not a bullpen you can super trust, especially going up against a hard-hitting opponent. So we've got our questions about how the bullpen will look in this game. And we also have some questions about the Rangers' bats. I mean, they've scored five, three, and one runs, respectively, at the Milwaukee Brewers. Not exactly the best pitching team out there. So how are they going to do against an Orioles team that's been pretty good throwing the ball recent, not, not necessarily recently, but it's coming off of a good game and definitely need to get back to those winning ways. They've been a good pitching staff this season in general, just not quite so much recently. The Rangers offense has been a problem for sure. I mean, they're 18th in the majors in run scored, 20th in the majors in batting average, and 24th in slugging percentage. Just not a team that hits the ball great. They're trying to make some moves here. We'll see what they can, you know, what they can do to really splash around here and make this team better but yeah it's gonna take a lot in my opinion and they're taking on a Baltimore Orioles team that just got off the schneid there with a four to two win over Cleveland they had just dropped five games in a row crazy to see a team as good as the Orioles lose five straight games they are 50 and 30 on the year after that win handing the ball in this one to Corbin Burns who's eight and three this season with a 2.35 ERA he's coming off of one of those games where we saw them get burned guys he went seven innings gave up five hits and four earned runs at Houston so you know not a disaster start necessarily but not his best stuff I mean his start before that he was at home pitching against the Phillies and he gave up only two earned runs over six innings in general guys he's looked very very good this season no major shock there I mean the Orioles have been a very good pitching staff over the course of this year, and it's just been really weird to see them in this recent tailspin. Although we are going to give Burns some credit. I mean, his tailspin is a game where he gave up four earned runs over seven innings. Not exactly the worst stuff. So in general, we can also feel very good about this Baltimore bullpen. Even though they maybe haven't been having the best time lately, they're still fourth in the majors with a 3.40 bullpen ERA. So not exactly a lot to complain about there. A very good bullpen, generally speaking. And this offense, while it's had its struggles lately, guys, I mean, they've scored a combined 12 runs over their last two games. 
not exactly terrible. Seems like they're pretty much out of that slump. Did they lose that game? They scored eight against Cleveland, eight to 10. They sure did. You bet they did. But in general, it seems like they're back on track. We just saw Gunnar Henderson hit a home run, his 26th home run of the season. That kid is just absolutely bonkers. This team is still first in the majors in runs scored. They are sixth in the majors in team batting average, batting 254 as a squad. They're first in the majors in slugging percentage. This is just a team loaded, loaded with talent. Plenty of great hitters up and down the roster. They can really hit the ball hard. Big fans of the long ball here for the Baltimore Orioles. And looking at the numbers for this game, guys, see the Rangers at plus 180. We've got the Orioles at minus 215. Looking at the uh, the run line in this game, if you take the Orioles at minus one and a half, you can get them at plus 100. That is very appealing. You can even find them out there up to plus 105. Guys, we're definitely going to be on the Orioles in this game. I like it a lot. This is very, very likely to end up in the pinned comment. The Orioles are 26 and 16 at home, and I know they haven't looked amazing lately, but Burns wasn't really part of that problem. And with the bats getting Getting back on track here, I think this Orioles team is on the way back up. Next up, guys, we're going to take a look at the floundering New York Yankees going on the road to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. The Yankees come to this game fresh off of a third straight loss. They've actually lost six out of their last seven games overall. We saw Aaron Judge hit a home run, but not a lot of other positives to draw from a game. They lost 12-2 to to the Mets. They got swept there in that two-game series. Things looking pretty dark all of a sudden for a 52-win team in the Yankees. They're handing the ball to Carlos Radon, who is 9-4 this season with a 3.86 ERA. Coming off of back-to-back, absolutely terrible starts, guys. At Boston, he went five innings, gave up five earned runs on seven hits. And then he followed that up his last time out, guys, back on the 21st against Atlanta. He was pitching in Yankee Stadium for that game. He went three and two-thirds innings, gave up 11 hits and eight runs. Seven of them were earned. He gave up three home runs in that game. Like, Radon just straight up not having a good time right now and yeah not a lot of positives to report right now for the Yankees guys not looking great the bullpen is trending down a little bit with a 3.28 bullpen ERA that is definitely headed in a uh, negative or a positive direction since it's ERA like it's going up guys that that bullpen ERA is headed skyward so Big questions right now about the Yankees pitching staff. They are in a slump. The hitters, man, they only scored two runs yesterday. So if you could you could make a case that they're in a slump too. They scored two, seven, one, eight, and one run respectively over their last few games. Obviously, they're missing Stanton, so that's gotta be a little bit tough. Overall, guys, it's yeah, it's just gotta be Cole just got rocked. Like, not a lot of positive things to find for the Yankees right now outside of Aaron Judge just absolutely hitting the cover off the ball. So we've got some concerns about the Yankees in this game, despite the great numbers that they put up over the course of the season. They're taking on the Toronto Blue Jays, who just managed to salvage one win there in their three-game series against the Red Sox. I mean, we saw the last game that series get suspended, so who knows what would have happened there. But they're 36-43 and 43 on the year. A lot of talk about how they're going to be sellers here and maybe just blow this thing up. We'll see what they actually do. They're hitting the ball to Jose Barrios in this one. He's 6-6 six and six this season with a 3.43 ERA. He's coming off of a couple of pretty questionable starts there against the Cleveland Guardians, guys. He gave up eight hits and six hits, respectively. He gave up five and four earned runs, respectively. Give up a grand total of four home runs over those two outings. And the guy has given up a total of seven home runs over his last four starts. Not exactly what you're hoping to see. Has it been a bunch of easy starts? No. I mean, twice against Cleveland, once at Milwaukee, and then once at home against the Baltimore Orioles. He's doing what he can out there. We do see Toronto is three and two over his last five starts. So he's kind of keeping him in positions to win at least somewhat, but not looking as dominant as we've seen him at other times this season. The Toronto bullpen. Also, no big shock there is a big, big problem, guys. One of the worst bullpens in the major leagues. So unless that bullpen can turn things around, it might not matter how good their starters look. They're going to give up some late game leads. That is absolutely for sure. The Toronto Bats, obviously coming off a game where they scored nine runs, has to feel good. They've scored nine, six, five, three, and one run, respectively. They're just This just isn't a great offensive team, guys. I mean, they're below average in all the major statistical categories. They're 26th in the majors in runs scored, 22nd in the majors, batting 233 as a team. We see Vladimir Guerrero. Jr. talking about getting traded and stuff like that. Like lots of uh, lots of big red flags surrounding the Toronto Blue Jays for me right now. Look at the numbers for this game, guys. The odds makers don't really agree. They've got the Yankees at minus 135, the Blue Jays at plus 118. We've got an over under of eight and a half in this game. This season in general, guys, the Yankees have been a very good road team. They're 28 and 16 on the road, which is definitely respectable. Toronto is only 18 and 19 at home. I think the uh, I think the books are a little bit out here on Radon. I don't think they feel like he's going to have a very good start here on the road, even going up against 
against a weak hitting team. Guys, this is a game I have very little confidence in either side. In general, I'm kind of leaning towards the Blue Jays plus 118. Uh, it seems a bit tough, obviously. I don't think this is a pick that's going to end up in the pinned comment. I do expect decent things from Barrios. I have legitimately zero idea what we're going to get from Rodone in this game. Like The guy has just not looked like himself over his last couple starts. Would not be shocked to see him come out, pitch like an inning or two, and then end up being hurt or something. Like All kinds of weirdness on the table for this one. So In general, I like the Blue Jays a little bit, but overall, I am staying away. Next on the docket, guys, we got the Cincinnati Reds going on the road to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. The Reds come into this game fresh off of losing two out of three there to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Not exactly the best look there. They're 37 and 43 on the year, not having the best time there in the NL Central. They're handing the ball in this game to Andrew Abbott, who's six and six this season with a 3.40 ERA. He's coming off a pretty decent start there against the Red Sox, where he went five and two thirds innings and gave up two earned runs on four hits. So, you know, not a terrible start. He did strike out 10 in that game, so that's pretty impressive. He's not really a guy that you can trust to go super deep into games. I mean, at Milwaukee, he went five innings at home against the Cubs. He went five innings. Both of those were relatively solid starts. He has struggled with control at different points in this season. I mean, he's walked combined eight hitters over his last three starts, so that's not ideal. And we have some question marks about him pitching against the Cardinals, guys. He faced the Cardinals back on the 28th of last month, so that is about a month ago, but he went six innings, gave up six earned runs on seven hits, including two home runs in that outing. So yeah, a little bit worried about that. And it was, that was at the Great American Ballpark. This one's going to be at Bush Stadium. So We'll see how he fares out there in that one. The Reds' bullpen is trending down a little bit, guys. They were, they've been looking good in general, but not, not headed in a positive direction right now. A 3.92 bullpen ERA, not exactly uh, you know something you want to write home about. And they're having a hard time. They had a hard time there in their series against the Pirates. They gave up six, nine, and five runs, respectively, against a pretty weak hitting team. So definitely some concerns about their uh, you know pitching staff in general and some concerns about the offense, guys. They scored one, five, 11, four, and three runs, respectively respectively, over their last several games. Over the course of the season, they haven't even been that good, guys. They're 26th in the majors, hitting 228 as a team. They are 21st in the majors and on base percentage. The run scored numbers are a little bit inflated, obviously, and all their offensive numbers are a little bit inflated. You get to play half their games at the Great American Ballpark. So we've got some significant questions about this offense. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of great hitters there and just not a lot of danger, if you ask me. They're going up against a Cardinals team that's been playing better recently. They've actually won five out of the last six games to get up to 41-38 and 38 on the season. They're six games back of the Milwaukee Brewers there in the NL Central. They're handing the ball in this game to Miles Michaelis, who comes into this game six and six on the season with a 4.68 ERA. Coming off kind of a mediocre start there against the San Francisco Giants. It was a game we saw the Cardinals win. He went six innings, gave up six hits and four earned runs. He hasn't given up a home run over any of his last three starts, which is pretty nice. It's not like he's been facing the toughest teams. I mean, he faced the Giants, the Cubs, and the Pirates. We do see the Cardinals are three and two over his last five starts, with those losses coming at, uh, at the Phillies and at home against the Pirates in a two to one game where Michaelis threw an absolute masterpiece. So in general, we feel pretty good about Michaelis out there on the mound in this game. We also feel pretty decent about the Cardinals bullpen that continues to climb guys. They're now 13th in the majors with a 3.95 bullpen ERA. They're, they're finding the right mix out there. Things seem to be improving just kind of for this pitching staff overall. And the bats have definitely gotten better for the Cardinals guys. They've scored four, one, four, five, nine, and six runs respectively over their last few games. We see Alec Burleson doing a lot out there. He had a double in the first game, the, to put it in the first runs of the game, so that was nice, and Brendan Donovan's been doing some positive things. Like, this offense not amazing necessarily, but I think they're on their way up. They're 26 in the majors and run score, which isn't great, obviously, but they're up to 19th and on base percentage. They're 17th in team batting average, batting over 240 as a team now. So a lot of positives to find right here for the Cardinals as this team continues to like, you know, kind of climb the standings and start to put up some wins. Looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Reds at plus 115. We see the Cardinals at minus 130. We've got an over under of eight and a half in this game. The Reds are only 17 and 20 on the road, which isn't very impressive, but the Cardinals are starting to amass a pretty solid home record, guys. They're 21 and 16 at home. Very respectable there. We do see both teams showing trends towards the under. So if you wanted to take a look at that under eight and a half, that would definitely be all right with me. But in general, guys, I'm leaning pretty toward, hard towards the Cardinals minus 130. I think we're going to see another decent start from Michaelis. I question what we're going to see from Andrew Abbott going up against a team that's had its way with him already once this season. So go ahead and give me the Cardinals minus 130 in this game against a Reds team that's not playing their best ball at the moment. 
Next on the docket, guys, we have the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Kansas City Royals. Cleveland comes into this game fresh off of a 4-2 loss there in their last game of the series against the Baltimore Orioles. That loss snapped a pretty lengthy winning streak, guys. The Guardians are up to 51-27 and on the year, handing the ball in this game to Ben Lively, who's 7-3 and this season with a 3.03 ERA. He's been looking very, very good. I mean, he did have that weird start at Toronto, but then followed it up with a very good start at home against Toronto. So back on track for him. And in general, guys, we see Cleveland is 4-1 and over his last five starts. So nothing terrible to report there. He hasn't faced the Royals yet this season, so nothing to be gleaned from that. But in general, guys, Ben Lively, he's been throwing the ball pretty well. I think we can have a decent amount of faith in his ability to have a good start out there, even on the road. And in general, guys, the Cleveland bullpen has been good. They're top five in the majors right now with a 3.50 bullpen ERA. So not a lot of complaints there. You're not going to go on a super long winning streak like they did without your bullpen throwing the ball pretty well. So not a lot of negatives to report for this team, including their offense. I mean, they are coming off of a game where they scored two runs. So obviously that's not exactly what you're looking for, but they scored two, 10, three, six, and six runs respectively over their last five games. Jose Ramirez is back out there swinging the bat really, really well, leading the way for this team that is fifth in the majors and runs scored and 12th in the majors team batting average. They're a top 10 on base percentage and a top 10 slugging percentage team. So nothing, nothing really too bad to find here for this, this guardian squad. I mean, hitting the ball pretty well recently, even going up against some pretty tough pitching there from the Orioles. Clearly the Orioles uh, pitching staff, not, not, not itself right now, but overall guys, we can feel pretty good about the Guardians swinging the bats. They're taking on a Kansas City Royals team that managed to win two out of three there against the Marlins. They did have that weird two to one loss, but they used a five run eighth inning there in game three to bring us the win and to bring themselves the win. They're 44 and 38 on the season. It has to feel good to be playing at home where they've been much, much better this year. They're handing the ball to Michael Walker, who's four and six this season with a 4.07 ERA. I would say he's probably the weak link in this uh, pitching staff, but man, his last several starts have looked very, very good. He did just come off the IL for his last start. It was at the Texas Rangers. They did lose that game six to nothing, but it was not Waka's fault, guys. He went five innings, gave up three hits and only a single earned run while striking out five and walking one. He just looked very, very good out there. And he was looking good before he got injured, came right back looking the same. So I think we can expect pretty good things here from Waka. He has basically been a monster uh, recently. So the, the question for me about the Royals right now is their, uh, their bullpen, which has clawed their way back to being top 10 in the majors with a 3.80 bullpen ERA. But until the series against the Marlins, the bullpen was having a pretty rough time. So can we trust them to get back on track in this one? I think we sort of can, possibly, but they're going up against the Guardians, which is a pretty tough hitting team. So yeah, definitely, definitely some questions there. The Royals offense has scored five, one, and four runs respectively over their last three games. They had a very, very rough time there at the Rangers, but this team is definitely a much better one at home. They're 11th in the majors in runs scored, 16th in the majors in batting average, 22nd in the majors in on-base percentage. Like this is a team that can have their issues at the plate, guys. Don't get me wrong. Not not a real not a real like killer lineup here. I mean, we are seeing good things from Bobby Witt Jr. In general, Salvador Perez got off to that crazy start, but that is well, well, well back there in the rearview mirror. So in general, guys, not an offense that we're super, super stoked about. And looking at the numbers for this game, we see one number that really sticks out to me. We've got the Guardians at minus 112. We've got the Royals at minus 104. And we have an over-under in this game of nine. Guys, the Royals are 45, 34, and three to the under this season. The Guardians are basically a 50-50 over-under team. We do see Kansas City is 27 and 15 at home, but Cleveland is 25 and 18 on the road. So I'm not going to say those exactly cancel each other out, but I have a hard time figuring out which team is going to win this game. But I definitely like under under nine in this spot. I also probably think this is a good no run first inning spot if you're determined to take a no run first inning play today. But in general, guys, I'm going to take under nine. I think this is way too big of a number. I think it should be eight or eight and a half. Definitely not nine. So give me the under in this game. I think we're going to see offense at a premium. If you want to take under in the first five, that would make sense to me as well. Last but not least, guys, we're looking at the Detroit Tigers going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Angels. The Tigers come to this game fresh off of losing two out of three there to the Phillies. They lost the last game of that series six to two. So not a lot of crazy crazy positives to report for the Tigers right now. I mean, they're 37 and 43 on the year. They're handing the ball in this one to Jack Flaherty, who's five and four this season with a 2.92 ERA. He's been one of those positives, guys. He's been throwing the ball fantastically well lately. I mean, his last time out, he gave only a single run on five and two thirds innings to the White Sox. Start for that, five innings, no runs. He's only given up a total of one earned run over his last four starts combined, spanning starts at Boston, at Texas, at Houston, and then at home against the White Sox. So yeah, not a lot of negatives for me to find right here for Flaherty. 
disparity. We also see the Tigers are 4-0 over his last four starts, so he is just looking great out there. The Tigers' bullpen in general this season, guys, has not been bad either. They're above average. A 3.84 bullpen ERA has them 11th in the majors, so not too scared about their bullpen either. I mean, things are looking pretty good for this pitching staff at this exact moment. The problem for the Tigers has been their offense, guys. They've scored 2, 4, 1, 11, and 1 run, respectively, over the last five games. They're 22nd in the majors in runs scored, 23rd in the majors in team batting average, so that's not great. They're 25th in on-base percentage, getting on-base at under a 300 clip, so just some big questions about what kind of offense you can expect this team to put up. I mean, unless it's a day that Riley Green hits a home run, which, you know, not as few and far between, but he's only got 15 home runs. He's batting nearly 260 on the season with 41 RBIs, but yeah, just not a guy I really think is on the kind of level that he can carry an offense on his own, and he might have to try and do that here going up against the Angels, who come to this game fresh off of a three-game sweep there of the Oakland A's. They won 5-2, to 7-5, to five, and 5-1 to one in that series. They're 33-46 and 46 on the year, though, so a lot of work to do. The Angels are handing the ball to Davis Daniel in this one. He is going to be making his Major League debut this season. This is going to be his first time in the Majors this year. Last year in the Majors, he looked very reasonable and very limited work. So we'll see what we can actually get out of him in this one, or by we, I mean the Angels. It's going to be interesting. You see a 27-year-old making his uh, Major League debut the, for the season in, on June 27th. It definitely raises some questions about how good is this guy really and we also have some major major questions about what the Angels bullpen can do if they can do anything positive they're one of the worst bullpens in the majors with a 4.72 bullpen ER right so not a ton of faith in them they're not going up against the hardest hitting opponent but man not a great bullpen at all and this offense for the Angels while they had a very good series there against the Oakland A's how much can you really take from that? The A's, not a great pitching team, not a great team overall. The Angels are 25th in the majors in runs scored and 24th in the majors in on-base percentage. So that kind of gives you an idea of where I really think this team is at at the plate. Despite the fact they're swinging some hot bats there against the A's, I think taking on the Tigers and Flaherty is going to be a whole different ball game for them. No uh, no pun intended there. Look at the numbers for this game, guys. We see the Tigers at minus 166. We see the Angels at plus 140. We've got an over-under of 8.5 in this game. Detroit is only 18-21. to 21 on the road, which is a bit troublesome, but not when you can take into consideration that the Angels are only 15 and 25 at home. The Angels have been one of the worst at home teams over the course of the season. So in general, guys, we're definitely leaning towards the Tigers minus 166 in this game. I'm expecting another solid start from Flaherty. He's been very, very good recently. I don't, I know the Tigers offense hasn't been amazing, but their bullpen's been good. And I think the Angels offense is due for a downturn after a very easy series there against Oakland. So give me the Tigers minus 166 in this game. I think they've got a definite, definite good chance to win this game the vast majority of the time. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.